So it's quite a simple start. I'm doing a four, a four chain loop, a bit like a granny square. You could do a magic ring um, if you prefer or any other start for a, a crochet motif, but this is one that I find is fairly easy to do for this. And it tightens up quite nicely at the end. So I'm working three chains there because this is going to be worked in half treble V-stitch. So I want the first two chains to represent the first half treble. The next chain is the chain for the middle of the V-stitch and then I'm going to work a, a half treble in there. And you can see that forms my first V-stitch. So I'm going to be working a total of six V-stitches with no gaps between them. So all in half trebles now after the first one. one. Chain two. And you can see I'm covering up the uh, yarn tail as I go, which I like to do. Okay, another half treble. So I'm going to join here. One, two, making sure I join in the second stitch and not in the opening of that V stitch. I need a stitch marker. I need two stitch markers for working this because I alternate the colours. And now I'm starting the first round with the coral. And the coral, I'm going to work a V stitch into each V stitch. And I'm going to be working... Um, a v-stitch in between each v-stitch as well so I'll end up with 12 v-stitches which is quite a steep increase for a small circle it will look slightly wrinkly but when I get the next round of blue v-stitches in there that will iron out and it will look uh, flat a flat circle like this one um, you can choose when you work this whether to start with um, a traditional attach with a, a slip stitch and work two chains and work up um, or at this point you could work a standing stitch which is what I'm going to do so I'm going to start with a slip stitch on there wrap the, wrap the yarn around the hook and I'm going to start in the opposite side from where I'm changing the blue yarn so that we don't have both changes falling at the same time um, so that's where I'm changing the blue yarn I've got one, two, three of those so I'm going to work into this half half treble v-stitch. So I'm working into the centre of the v and oh, <laughs> trying to work a whole treble there, that's a half treble, a chain. The reason I like doing that is because it's really easy to join into this part of the, the stitch, the big loop there makes it a, a nice easy join. Most of the time though you're not joining the yarn with each round, you're actually um, lifting the yarn up from behind and working a, an extra chain in the back. So here I'm working in between the V-stitches to make my increase. I'm working a whole V-stitch just into that space there. And then I'll be working into the next V-stitch. And the next space. Just going to pull those stitches apart. The first round is a little bit fiddly. It's one of the reasons I like the um, four chain loop as a um, starting method it gives you just a little bit more looseness to work into than a tightened up magic loop so when I finish this I should have 12 V stitches if I haven't I've gone wrong somewhere So before I join that, I am going to count them because I would rather pick up on a mistake now. Um, you can see, yeah, this does go rather wrinkly. It looks like it's not going to sit flat, but you can see over here, it does after the next round is worked. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are 12 feet stitches, that's correct. 
Um, and the other thing I liked was that the I correctly identified exactly opposite for starting um, this far between the sixth and seventh fee stitch. So now I want another stitch marker for my coral yarn. And I'll be working a round of the V-stitch in the blue, picking up from where I left it here. As the bag got bigger, I really liked the fact that I could actually store the yarn, the yarn that I'm not working with in the bag because it made things a lot easier um, it, not to get tangled and so on. So here's my blue yarn. To put that over there. And I'm going to get my... It's a bit there that could tangle with it. Um, oh, that should be at the back. Let's feed it through. I think I pulled it forward to show that I wasn't catching it. Uh, but it's quite forgiving. So I'm going to go into here. I don't take the stitch marker out. You can if you prefer it. I'm going to put my um, hook through the loop, the, the working loop with the stitch marker in it, and make one chain. And I'm going to come round to the front and in the V stitch to the left in the direction of work. So it would be to the right if you're a right-handed crocheter. And I'm going to pull that loop through. The extra chain there helps to uh, bring the, the, work, the working yarn up a level. So I'm going to work two half trebles again to represent the first, uh, sorry, two chains to represent the first half treble, a half treble for the center of the V stitch, and then a half treble in the V stitch. And then I'm going to work all the way around in half treble V stitch, one in each of the 12 V stitches we made in the last round. Of these it gets much easier not to miss them as you go round in um, further rounds but at the moment when we're just doing the first few it's easy to miss a stitch or end up working in between two stitches where you shouldn't so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve and then I'm back to my join so yeah we've got the twelve stitches there so now I've got my stitch marker from the previous time I left the blue in the right place to put that in. And I can drop that chain there and go back to the peach side. So you can see it's not a bulky join as you move up from one round to the other at all. Um, but it is nice to have it on the opposite side with the peach because there's going to be a join being worked in this direction as well. Um, and having both together, I think, might have made a rope-like look, uh, which wouldn't be quite as nice, especially not to have on one side of the bag. Um, but there is a very definite, definite inside and outside with this uh, st with stitch pattern. <laughs> 